It's only been a few days since Blue Ghost touched down, and within 24 hours from now, a different lunar lander is scheduled to do the same. Late last month, a Falcon 9 launched the Intuitive Machines Athena spacecraft, a part of the IM-2 mission. This is also a privately built lunar lander and a follow-up to the IM-1 mission, which managed to touch down but tip over in the process, resulting in the lander being on its side. Here I'll go more in-depth into the current state of the lander, newly released video as it orbits the moon, what to expect, and more. Not long after launching, data from a 6-second full-thrust mainstage engine burn confirmed Athena hit her 9.5 meter per second target with approximately 0.38 meters per second accuracy. Intuitive Machines said in a statement, Propulsion mixture ratios, mass flow rate, and temperature were as predicted. The TCM was nominal per expectations. Athena continues to be in excellent health and is closer to the moon now than the Earth. We then got a sequence of photos when Athena was approximately 152,000 kilometers from the moon on March 1st. A few days later, on the 3rd, they completed the scheduled 492-second Main Engine Lunar Orbit Insertion, or LOI burn, at 6.27 a.m. CST, meaning Athena was now orbiting the moon. With this came even more images and even the first video. In a statement, the company said, Athena continues to be in excellent health in lunar orbit. Overnight, flight controllers calibrated Athena's landing navigation cameras, which are designed to autonomously track her position and detect hazards during landing. As for one of the videos in particular, this image sequence is taken from a separate public affairs camera and is made up of 240 images taken over a mid-latitude region over a 10-minute span. Each image is shown as two frames in the sequence. Athena then captured a second image sequence over the moon's south pole region near her intended landing site, one of NASA's designated human landing sites for the Artemis campaign. As of right now, Athena is still targeting a landing opportunity on March 6th at 11.32 a.m. CST. Live landing coverage is scheduled to start at 10.30 a.m. CST or 11.30 a.m. EST on the Intuitive Machines IM-2 mission page. Recently, flight controllers confirmed that Athena completed lunar orbit insertion with enough accuracy to forego the IM-2 mission's optional lunar correction maneuver. They went on to mention that Athena continues to be in excellent health, completing lunar orbits every two hours, waiting for the sun to rise on her intended South Pole region landing site. The lander's next planned maneuver is the descent orbit insertion, which is designed to lower her orbit to make a landing attempt. Only hours ago, the company said that the lander has completed 24 of its 39 orbits and is still on schedule. In terms of the goal of this mission, they are quoted saying, Intuitive Machines' IM-2 mission represents a significant leap forward in lunar exploration, ready to demonstrate water hunting infrastructure services on the moon's surface. IM-2 is set to demonstrate lunar mobility, resource prospecting, and analysis of volatile substances from subsurface materials, a critical step toward uncovering water sources beyond Earth a key component for establishing sustainable infrastructure both on the lunar surface and in space, they said. A key objective of IM-2 is the deployment of NASA's Trident Drill and M-Solo mass spectrometer to probe up to one meter beneath the lunar surface, showcasing the technology needed to detect essential volatiles like water and CO2. The mission also introduces new mobility capabilities with Intuitive Machines' Micronova Hopper, named GRACE, which can travel up to two kilometers from the lander, capture detailed surface imagery, and explore craters. The spacecraft is actually a separate vehicle with its own thrusters that will, in theory, allow it to hop up to 100 meters high as it travels away from the lander. Additionally, a rover equipped with Nokia's Lunar Surface Communication System will test high-speed, long-range communication solutions tailored for future space missions. They expect around 10 days of sunlight after landing for different science and operations. In addition, similar to Blue Ghost, Athena plans to observe and capture images of a lunar eclipse. On the IM-1 mission, an issue with the navigation system resulted in the rough touchdown which tipped over the lander. This time around, the company is hoping to have learned a lot from that initial attempt and come in much slower for the final descent. In terms of the lander's design, it's very similar to IM-1, which is a tall spacecraft filled to the brim with solar panels and experiments. Tomorrow morning, we'll see if the company can touch down successfully. Arguably the most important part of the mission is the lander's final descent and the landing that follows. This starts with the Descent Orbit Insertion Burn, or DOI. The DOI is a small maneuver that usually happens on the far side of the moon. The main engine fires to slow the lander so that its minimum altitude drops from 100 kilometers to about 10 kilometers near the landing site. Once DOI occurs, Athena is completely autonomous. The lander is expected to coast for approximately one hour after DOI. Then the GNC system will activate and the main engine for power descent initiation. While all of this is happening, the terrain relative navigation cameras and lasers on the lander's downward side feed information to the navigation algorithms, which provide guidance and control. For the landing, Athena must reduce its velocity by approximately 1,800 meters per second to land softly on the surface of the moon. All Intuitive Machines Nova C-class lunar landers have an engine designed to continuously burn and throttle from PDI until touchdown. 
This approach is similar to what the Apollo descent module did. When the lander engine comes on at the power descent initiation, it is initially in a hard braking phase. The lander stays in the braking phase until approximately 2 kilometers from the landing site. At the end of that maneuver, Athena pitches over and uses its main engine. Now Athena is generally upright, with the hazard relative navigation sensors facing forward in the area where the lander intends to touch down. Once the lunar lander is getting close to its landing site, the onboard software selects a safe designated landing site with the slightest slope, free from hazards, within the range of the lander. Athena's systems are intended to match lunar gravity to fly toward this site. During this time, the main engine is continually throttling down, lowering the engine power to compensate for the lander getting lighter and lighter. Athena is designed to land at 1 meter per second velocity. Flight controllers expect about a 15 second delay before confirming the ultimate milestone, softly landing on the surface of the moon. Intuitive Machines and its customers expect to conduct science investigations and technology demonstrations for approximately 10 days, before the lunar night sets on the south pole of the moon, rendering Athena inoperable. As partially mentioned before, one of the payloads aboard is a lunar rover. In this case, the Lunar Outpost Map, or Mobile Autonomous Prospecting Platform Rover, is hoping to lead the industry in efficiency and autonomy. With advanced navigation systems that operate without GPS, Map uses visual cues and sensors to autonomously navigate and avoid hazards ensuring a reliable performance in the challenging lunar environment. Its specialized wheels and rocker arm suspension are hoping to allow it to traverse difficult terrain with precision, granting access to previously unreachable regions. During this first lunar voyage, MAP is slated to be the first rover at the lunar south pole, and the first commercial rover on another planetary body. We can also hope for some great images and videos, both of the landing and its 10 days of operations. There are a total of seven public affairs office or PAO cameras for the IM-2 mission. There will be four cameras on the lander that may provide a 360-degree view of the Nova Sea lander at critical portions of the mission. One camera will be located near the Prime 1 payload to capture images of the drill cycle. There will also be two cameras on the Grace Micro Nova Hopper to capture images of the lunar terrain. In a statement, they said, There are four PAO cameras that will be located on the ends of the Reaction Control System or RCS booms. These cameras may experience high temperatures when exposed to direct sunlight and need to be monitored before power on. The drill camera will be in the shade during the Prime 1 mission and should not pose a problem for image capture. Grace's two cameras will experience a wide range of temperatures due to the nature of the mission. They will also experience very cold temperatures when in the permanently shadowed region, they said. Either way, we should get some good views tomorrow morning as the lander attempts touchdown. If successful, there would be two privately built spacecraft on the moon, both operating at the same time. We are now less than 24 hours away from the scheduled touchdown of Intuitive Machines' Athena lander, a part of the IM-2 mission. While the last attempt had a rougher landing than they had hoped, the company is confident they can get it right this time around. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.